I'm Dr. Quinn and I will be taking care of you today. Okay. Just get my gloves on. Perfect. Just following. Breathe normally for me. You just order your quick test, okay? Oh, hello. Hi there. Come on in. Take a seat. Make yourself comfortable. It's nice to meet you. So I'm Dr. Quinn. And I will be taking care of you today. So, before we get into anything, I'd just like to go over all of your information and make sure that everything I have in my records are correct. Okay? I know that the receptionist took all of this info down already, but it's always rather difficult to, to hear on the telephone. So, if we can just go through it and confirm everything before we get started. Is that okay? Alright, perfect. So, if you can just give me your first and last name. Yeah. And your date of birth. Mm-hmm. And your address? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Postal code. Yes. Perfect. And also your contact phone number. Okay. 
okay? These notes are totally, totally private for my ears alone and my eyes alone. It's just so that I can keep track of your progress and have something to refer to, okay? Is that alright with you? Good. Okay, perfect. So, can you just uh, describe a little bit more the symptoms you've been feeling? Hmm. Okay, I'm sleepy. Unmotivated. Sad. Depressed. Yeah. Mm, I'm really sorry. It's no fun to feel like that. Um, have you had any thoughts about hurting yourself or anyone else? Okay. Yeah.
Mm -hmm. Alright, so before we talk a little bit about your lifestyle and things we could do to improve your mental health in terms of changing any habits and day-to-day -day activities of which there's a lot so, you know, we'll see what you're already doing and kind of work out what changes might be necessary before we do that though I'd like to do, if it's okay with you a very simple, quick little examination, just the basics going through your eyes, nose, mouth, body alignment, just the basics, check your heart, blood pressure, that sort of thing, just to make sure that this really is not a um, physical ailment, because sometimes our bodies are really smart, and sometimes your body will tell you that something is wrong by impacting your mental health. You know, sometimes you can be low on some nutrients or something is just not right and your body might try to signal that with pain but sometimes, you seem like a tough cookie, sometimes pain is not enough. Sometimes people ignore the pain and that's when your body can signal that something is wrong through your mental state. So I just want to kind of be able to write that off as a possibility by checking you out and making sure that um, your vitals are all good and you're functioning as well as you can be. And then once we can rule that out, we know that our best bet is to tackle lifestyle changes. Okay? Is that alright? Okay, I'll be very, very quick. That way we can, you know, rule out any bodily ailments. Because I've seen that happen many, many times. We change all your habits, but you're just still not feeling well mentally. And then I found out later on that you were, you know, low in something in your nutrients. Or, like, there's been a lot of examples. So I just want to make sure that that's not what we're dealing with. Okay. Okay, fabulous. And um, then we can book you in for about, well, we'll talk, but maybe two or three weeks from now, we'll have a little follow up appointment. And we can keep on meeting regularly to discuss how you're feeling, how these changes you're making are impacting your life kind of troubleshoot. Sometimes it might take a bit longer than others to work out what changes need to be made to make you feel your best. But I promise, in no time, you will be feeling absolutely amazing. You did. You did the right step here, and we're gonna be all right, okay? Okay, so before I look you over, are you aware of any changes that you might have noticed in your body? I know you're feeling quite tired and lethargic, and you said that started, what did you say, actually two months ago or so? Two to three months ago. Have you felt any difficulties in your body, any changes of breathing or seeing, moving about or... Mm, okay, okay, for sure. Alright, okay, we'll talk about um, if there's anything that's kind of changed in that time frame in your life that might have triggered this reaction in your brain or, you know, we'll discuss all of that, okay? But first of all, like a plan. Okay. Okay. So just get my gloves on. Alright, so 
We're gonna start off with your eyes. Now, before we start, have you noticed any changes at all in your vision and your ability to see, whether that be far away or close up, any blurry vision, anything at all like that? Okay. going to start off by just looking at your eyes up close. Um, I'm gonna shine this tiny little light in there. It might be a bit uncomfortable, but it won't last long, okay? So if you can just look straight ahead for me and you can blink as many times as you need to. So now I want to test your visual perception. So we're going to do a couple of tests here again. Very, very simple, very easy. So first off, we're going to just take a look at your ability to move your eyes properly. Okay, so what I'm going to get you to do is look at the tip of my finger or so. looking at your eyes and just seeing how they move. Do they move together and properly or if there's something a bit off? Okay, very simple. Yep, so tip the finger and just follow it as it moves all around. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yep, 
instead of following my finger, I'm going to get you to look straight ahead. What I want you to do is tell me when you can no longer see my finger, even out of, you know, the corner of your vision, when you can no longer see it. That's what I want you to tell me, okay? Okay, so looking straight ahead, maybe at the tip of my nose, that'll work. Both eyes, yeah. Okay, so just follow it and tell me when you to see you. your head up a bit so I can see. And I'm going to shine my light again just inside each nostril, just making sure there's nothing out of the ordinary. Okay? Yeah, ready? Alright, just let me know if it's uncomfortable, but I won't get too deep in there. Mm-hmm. Okay, it looks good. Yeah, in the other nostril. Okay, I think it does. 
just to test your ability to smell and for your brain to translate those smells, okay? So I'm going to have a couple of essential oils here and I'm gonna just hold them underneath your nostril and just sniff and tell me what scent you smell, okay? We'll do both noses first and then we'll do each individually too, okay? So these aren't labeled, so no bother cheating. <laughs> repeat it a few times if you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, okay. I like the look of that. All oh, looks okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, so lastly, let's take a look at your ears. Okay, so first of all, we're 
gonna just take my light one more time and take a peek inside each ear. So if you can just turn your head to the side for me. I'm going to just look inside the ear canal and see if I can see any abnormalities at all. Okay. Mm-hmm. feel that? No pain, anything like that? A little cold, yeah. I know it's getting chilly in this room. I need to get myself another cup of tea after this. Absolutely. Alright, that looks good. Can you just switch now? Turn your head the other way. Just switch close up the other ear for me and in your head. That's it. Perfect. Okay. Um, I think of a number here. Eight hundred and twenty-two. Good. All right. You can unplug your ears now. Turn back to face me. Very good. So I have no issues either with your ears. That's great. Everything feels fine. Alright, perfect. You can take a seat again. 
seems okay, your body seems to be moving, no joints out of whack or anything that I can see, yeah, okay, good, alright, we're getting there, so, two more things I'd like to do is check your heart, and then check your blood pressure, okay, so, I'm gonna take a listen here with my stethoscope, it's going to be a little cold, so, I'm just gonna pop this right on your chest, pop your heart there. And just breathe normally for me. Mm-hmm. That's good. In and out. Mm-hmm. I'm just listening to your heartbeat. Make sure I don't hear any irregular murmurs. Yeah, that's good. Just keep as I push. So, just bear with me. It won't last too long, okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just keep your arm like that. That's perfect. Getting a little tight, but okay. done before a few years ago. Okay. Yeah, so especially when it comes to your mental health, there are quite a few key nutrients and hormones in your blood that really do dictate how you are feeling. Okay, so if we can just test all of your levels and make sure that you are shape. I think that would be very, very helpful. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, okay, so, is that okay? Yeah. I, I really would suggest a yeah. Okay, good. So, there is actually, luckily or conveniently, a clinic just next door. And you can get your blood tested, okay? And um, we're gonna get them to check all of your levels, and then that way, if you go right after this appointment, we should, if we're lucky, get the results by Friday, if not Monday or Tuesday. And what I'll do is I'll give you a quick little phone call, go over the results with you, and, you know, as an example, perhaps you're running low in vitamin D, I'll suggest that you take a vitamin, I'll suggest, I mean, I would already suggest that you get outside, get some extra sunshine. Um, or if you're low on any other vitamin or something, I might suggest eating more of a certain food or more of taking additional vitamins, anything like that. And if we 
can get any of those levels that might be low back up to par, I think you will, that will be one of the many um, arms required towards making you feel better. Need my gloves anymore to do that. So, you know, one thing that I think you might find useful, and right now I'm just going to give you, offer you a bunch of suggestions, and then I want you to just go home and think about it, okay? And then next time when you come back, we can work out what specifically you'd like to do. I can book you some appointments. I've got a great team of people I can refer you to. Okay, so, um... One thing you might find helpful is a life coach. I've got the greatest lady on call. It's very affordable, and you can just meet with her once, or it can be a more ongoing meeting as you see fit. And she 
will discuss with you your natural innate talents, the skills you have created, your passion, and try to find something that would work well for you. Okay? And then she can further offer guidance and assistance towards what you might need to do, what steps you might need to take toward creating Okay, so I think that's a great option for you. Um, have you ever considered or met with a life coach or anything like that before? No? Okay, I think it would be a great option for you. But you can just think about it for now. So I'm just going to write you a little list here of things that we discussed so you don't forget. You can think about it, okay? Alright, now tell me about your relationships. Do you have any significant other or any closer friendships? Not really. Mm-hmm. And has it always been the way? Yeah. Mm, a, bit of a, a bit of a loner. I am too. It's okay. We're not all meant to be social butterflies, but I do really believe, and there's a lot of science on this, that humans are social creatures, even if you're very Even if that is the case, maybe you're not meant to or you don't need to be social all the time. Maybe once a week would be good a place to start. Just meeting up with a regular group of people. If you find you're a bit more anxious, a bit more unsure of what to say, a group setting can be great because you can just do most of the listening and kind of chime in here and there. So I know things are a bit more hard at the moment, but hopefully we could find you some sort of club, you know, sewing club, or cooking club, or a sports team, or, you know, just a house league, like, basic little thing. Something like that. Those are usually really good, too, because you're occupied, you've got other things to do, so it's not so much pressure when it comes to communicating. And then hopefully from there you can find yourself a nice close friend, somebody you can talk to and be open with. Mm -hmm. It's really, really, really helpful for the human soul to get something off their chest and just tell another person how they are struggling. And then that person doing the same, you can feel and realize that we all have our issues, we all have our struggles, so they may not be the same. It just helps to have somebody to get through those difficulties together. Another thing you might enjoy or find helpful is a therapist. I'm sure that's something you've thought about. Yeah, have you ever met with one before? Okay, I really think... Let me just close. And um, a therapist. I really think a therapist would be very, very helpful for you, not only to just get those things off your chest and have somebody reassure you, they meet with lots of people from all different situations, someone to reassure you that you're not alone and that many are going through similar things, somebody to also provide coping mechanisms and ways to deal with your anxieties, your depression, ways to identify your triggers and how you might deal with them. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that is something I would really suggest. And I mean, I would suggest all of these, really, but therapist is just something I think everybody should be speaking with on the regular. Okay, um, what else? Now, do you have a regular routine in place for your life? So, yeah, well, for starters, a sleep schedule wake up in morning routine, that kind of thing. No? Okay. That is something I would really suggest. Um, there's a lot of reasons. One being that going to bed and waking up at the same or very similar times every single day is very, very helpful for your body. It allows you to fall asleep better and wake up easier, be more energized because your body gets used to the cycle. And also, your body is able to better release those hormones. 
hormones as you sleep because it's at the same schedule every night. Your body is very habitual even if you don't want to be. So it really appreciates when you do that. So I recommend that's something you can start tonight and this week. Decide what time you'd like to wake up, what time you'd like to go to bed, making sure you've got at least eight hours in there. Or typically I say to schedule nine hours in case you takes you a bit of time to fall asleep or you wake up in the night. That way you're guaranteed eight hours or so. Mm-hmm. And you know, if you set the schedule maybe 11 to 7 or 10 to 7 and you find that um, it's just not working for you, it's too early or too late, or whatever the reason, just slowly change it and eventually over a few weeks you should be able to find a schedule that works well for you. Okay, so I would really suggest that and then same thing, something to help you stick to that is a routine for the morning and especially the evening. What do you do to unwind at night to help you calm your mind? You're getting off your technology, putting it away, maybe just reading a book, drinking some tea, writing in a journal. Those are some habits that I think you should sound okay. I know it's not for everyone. Some people are very set in their ways, but I always like to suggest it. Okay, so consider that. I'm just going to write also a book. Okay. Okay, one other thing. This might not be for you, but I have to say. Have you heard of or do you meditate? Good. Okay, well that is fabulous. I'm glad to hear it. So you're familiar, but you don't do it all that often. Yeah, you try. <laughs> I don't like it that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, well, I'm sure you can guess what I'm going to say is I would suggest trying to squeeze in 10 minutes every day. Mornings are usually good, but maybe you could do five minutes in the morning, five before bed. Whatever works for you. Just something to calm the mind, let go of those thoughts, let go of that attachment. Regular meditation really helps you to cope with life, to cope with your thoughts when those bad thoughts start creeping in, telling you mean things or bad things to do. You can push them aside. It allows you to have that extra muscle, that extra strength to only listen to the thoughts that actually help you, that are kind, and that guide you towards being a better version of yourself. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to write down meditation. I've also got a few apps that are free. You can have a little guided meditation. There's a couple. There's that one. check those all out, or you can just do it yourself, focusing on your breath, maybe counting in and out for five or seven beats. Okay, so I really suggest you work on that, and we can discuss how it's going in a few weeks' time when we meet again. Okay. All right, we're getting there. I'd love to know about your diet. How is that? Would you I know it's kind of hard to remember. Yeah, maybe you can give me your average kind of breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm-hmm. Oh, that sounds yummy. Very healthy, too. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, what kind of things do you put in that? Oh. Oh, that sounds... That's an interesting combination. Is that good? I'll have to try. based on the results of this little experiment. 
but you could also meet with a nutritionist. She can go over what you eat on a regular basis and changes that would be beneficial to make and provide you with healthy recipes, things that you might enjoy. So I'd absolutely love if you could keep a little food journal of absolutely everything you eat from morning to night. Yeah, as many details as you can provide and then also on that same little diary if you can make a note of how you're feeling that day mentally or if it changes throughout the day because some people do have food allergies or irritations that directly that directly that directly relate that directly correlate to how you're feeling. Some people are, you know, gluten intolerant and when they eat it, it really impacts their body and their mental health. And then if you also want to make a note on that same diary, your sleep schedule and how you went, how you slept that day, um, everything that you've been doing, and some of the other things we'll mention as well. If you can just keep note every day of what you've done and how you feel, that will allow us to do better work out how everything correlates and if and how you're eating or how you're living, how that impacts your health and your mental health, okay? It's very, very useful. Um, of course, less processed food, more whole foods will really help you as well. Processed foods always make you feel worse. It's just the way that it is. So, yeah. Now, what about Exercise. Are you getting active regularly? Mm hmm. Okay, that's good. So I would recommend trying to up that to almost every day. Maybe five days a week is a good place to start. And even on those off days, if you can just go for a walk, get outside, get some fresh air. Mm hmm. Yeah, you exercise, as I'm sure you can tell on the days you do. It makes you feel better because it releases so many endorphins, gets your blood flow going, gets your lymphatic system moving. All of those things and more really help your mental health. I know that I can be quite lazy, but I've been very good at being active. I like yoga, that's my choice. But as much as I possibly can, because when I don't, I really feel more down. It's very, very helpful. So, yes, if you can do that, and there's tons of ways to get active. Like I said, if we can try to find you some sort of sport, you can be social and get some exercise. But, you know, go for, for a walk or a run or a bike ride, swimming. There's a lot you can do in the summer. But even on a rainy day, there's many things you can do inside in the home. Yoga, Pilates, um, yes, exactly. Okay, so you know that if you can try your best to add that a bit more to your life. And again, keep track of that on your little journal for me, okay? Alright, now, hopefully if you're not already doing this though, I would love for you to get outside. Especially with the beautiful weather we're having. Do you have a garden or anything you can sit in? You do? Okay, that's great. So try to find at least 30 minutes of your day where you can go outside. You can maybe meditate at the same time. Gonna, or work out at the same time. Just something to kind of combine it all and make it a bit more convenient. And, um, yeah, the sunshine, of course, is great for you. Get your vitamin D. It just heals you. But also just nature in general is very, very good for your mental health. Mother Nature knew what she was doing and it is so healing to the human mind, body, and soul. If you can get out, you know, lie in the grass, feel your feet on the grass, or the grounding, look up at the sky, the beautiful blue sky, the clouds passing, Birds flying overhead, look at the bugs doing their thing. Just reminding yourself about the perfection that is nature and how beautiful it is. And just soaking it in, breathing in the smells. All of that will make you feel much, 
much better. There's tons of science on that. Nature is very healing. All right, well, you know, that's all I really have for it today. Do you have any questions or anything else you'd like to discuss? Mm, okay, good. Yes, exactly. So I've got it all written there for you, actually. Nature. Um, if you want to keep a journal, keep track of when you go outside, you can make the best notes possible for me, then I can review that, and we can continue to tailor a plan that will work best for you. And in no time at all, you will be feeling much, much better. Again, I want to let you know that I'm so very proud of you for coming today and speaking with me. I know it's difficult to be vulnerable, and I know, as I now know, you're a bit of an introvert. That's even harder to do, so I'm very proud of you. You should be proud of yourself. Okay, so you take this sheet here with all of the notes that I made. Start a little journal. Head on over next door and get your blood test, okay? And then, like I said, I'll just get, get a call. And we can discuss those results, and then why don't we quickly book you in for your follow-up appointment? Is that okay? Alright, so let's just see here. I'm going to do two and a half. Let's do three weeks. Okay? So we have a bit more of reference. Okay. So how about June 27th? 10 a.m.? Yeah? Okay, good. Just schedule that. So, we're gonna send you a confirmation email and phone call a few days prior. I'll write that down for you, too, when you know. Okay, perfect. So, there you go. That's everything there for you to think about. I'll call you as soon as I hear back about the blood test, and then after that, I'll see you. Okay, it was lovely meeting you, and I will see you again soon. Alright, you take care, enjoy the rest of your day.